a short game and I gotta get home for lunch. As Pat Hughes would say, get out the tape measure. It's a long one. Nick Castellanos with back-to-back -back plate appearances, two home runs in the first three innings. Fantastic. He is hungry to win for these Cubbies. And he on that bat slam. That was amazing. That was a great celebration. Spike in the bat like Gronk would the football. And man, he was on fire that day. Actually went 0 for 2 in his next two appearances. But hey, he got the two home runs. So the video is going to be a little blurry here and shaky because I have a telephoto zoom lens on my phone attached. And yeah, quality could be better, but uh, it was a little bit better than the normal zoom. I like to accessorize a bit. Quintana was on the mound, and he had a pretty good outing. Well, at least better than his loss to the Nationals when I was there the previous Saturday. He went for 5.2 innings, 4 hits, no earned runs, 2 walks, 3 strikeouts, but his big highlight was getting an RBI double. That just came out of nowhere. I saw it rocket to center field. It was awesome. I think it drove in Bodie for the run. So, pretty good uh, at-bat for Quintana. So here it's the end of the inning. I just want to get a little video here of the ground out from shortstop to first and didn't get the actual play, but wanted to get in the guys coming in from the outfield, you know, going back to the bench. And if you can hear, here in the background, the organ gun, Gary Presti, the best organist in baseball. And it's just that vibe of Wrigley that no other stadium has, that organ sound, is just, is so, so great. This is what makes Wrigley one of the best places in all of sports. There's a bit of the uh, rundown. There are the uh, rooftops. I've never been to the rooftops. It'd be cool to go to one of them. There are the World Series flags and the pennant flag from 2016. Very, very cool. And uh, I like them out there. Joining all the other flags on the big scoreboard out there. 1907 and 1908 made, made World Series flags. Very iconic look of the scoreboard there. And those flags are in standings order of the day. So it happened a few times during the game, but I wanted to make sure I had one recording of it where Ryan Braun was introduced at the plate for the Brewers. So this was Nick Castellanos' second home run of the game. And after each home run, they play, whoop, there it is. And then after each run scored, you know, if it's an RBI single or double, they play, um, I'm coming. That was fast. I like these seats a lot because back when I was about to start college with my friend Eric, we got tickets for a Cubs-Orioles game in 2013. He got tickets in, uh, I think, 203, way behind us from this point of view. But I just liked this side of Wrigley. I liked the view it had. And this was before the scoreboard, big jumbotron there, installed in 2015. But it's just a nice view of the stadium. And I really like this view a lot. So whenever I get a chance to get tickets on my own or my choice of area to sit in, I like the 200 section, 204, 203-ish. It's a great view.
So, Major League Hats, if you're watching this, um, skip it a bit, because I'm going to be talking some hardcore stats here, and, and I know you're afraid of those. So, the Cubs, as of September 1st, are the third best in the league for average capacity held attendance. Whereas, yes, the Dodgers have a bigger stadium of 56,000, and as of September 1st, they have about 3.4 million who have attended. But throughout those home games, they've only had capacity at 87% to fill their stadium, where the Cubs are at 90%. Cardinals are at 91%, and then Boston is at 95%. Behind the Dodgers are Milwaukee and Houston at about 85.2%. So it just really shows how popular Wrigley Field is. The Cubs, mm, I mean, they do, they have sucked in the past. I mean, they had a 100-year drought. But Wrigley Field is just an iconic place. It is Americana. It is American history where we can all walk into. People go to Wrigley Field, Wrigleyville, to have a fun time in the great atmosphere. And it's just a great place, you know, to have fun. To be a bleacher bum, have beers, have a hot dog. Just have a great time. This class is Ronnie Woo Woo Wickers. He was born in October of 1941, longtime Cubs fan, and he is just known for shouting woo. You know, woo, go Cubs, woo, big Z, Zambrano, woo, fly the W, you know. And he was given the nickname of Leather Lungs by Harry Carey because he could just shout for hours in a big exclamation kind of a tone. And he was just a huge, you know, tourist attraction for for the Cubs. He's uh, very iconic for the Wrigley Field and uh, just for the Cubs organization. So really cool to see him in person. He didn't do anything while we were watching him go by, but he got a lot of attention from some fans. In the bottom of the seventh inning, Victor Caratini got an RBI single. And in the background, whenever a run scores, like an RBI single, double, whatever like that, they play Sam and Dave, Hold On, I'm Coming, Soul Song from 1966. Very, very cool song. Six nothing, Cubs in the bottom of the seventh. Little fuzzy again with the zoom lens on. Russell is on deck. Schwarber is up at bat. And boom! Literally, I did not think that that was a home run, but it turned into a home run. There was no like huge crack of the bat. It was just a soft, soft crack. You know, it just hit the ball and he's out of here. I was very surprised by that. Like, did that go? It didn't sound like it, but it went. It went, and the Cubs now lead 7 0. Here we have Ryan Brunigan. Two of the players, my dad, brother, and sister. Uh, Ryan Butterfield. Great for the bacon cut. So, I think it's the footage here. Here comes to huh? So, right over there on the Budweiser. Right field, jumbo time. That's where Carl Schroeder hit that very famous home run in the 2015 NLCS against the Cardinals. So, as you can hear, I was moderately excited about Chris Bryan coming to bat. Starting next year, I'm going to miss WGN for my go-to place for watching Cubs games. Because Cubs are getting their own marquee network. And to be honest, I'll do a video some other time about it. It's going to suck. For many years, WGN Radio was the host of the Cubs, but now it's 670 to score. The guy in the red jacket there, that is the legendary 
Pat Hughes, who has been the Cubs radio announcer since 1994. Inning, top of the ninth, two outs. Lorenzo Kane is at bat, and these Cubs fans are ready for a huge win over the Brewers. Fischek is on the mound. The pitch, Dibbler over the the Bias, and then the first for the out, and the Cubbies win. Crank it up, crank up, go Cubs, go. Let's fly that W. Well, I fumble around with uh, getting my W flag out, and my mom holding it eventually. There you go. The song Go Cubs Go was made by Steve Goodman, who was a big Cubs fan back in 1984. And unfortunately, he died in September of 84. So he never really got to see the cultural impact this song has had on so many Cubs fans throughout the decades. Fly that W. Another tradition for the Cubbies after a win is playing Sweet Home Chicago by the Blues Brothers. One of my favorites. Also a really great movie. Go check it out. Let me read off a few uh, box score stats here. Nick Castellanos had those back-to-back -back plate appearance home runs, but he finished the day two for four. You had Quintana get an RBI double, which was huge. Quintana went five and two-thirds innings, four hits, zero runs, two walks, and three strikeouts. So, could have been a better appearance, but it's okay. And then you had the Chorber home run in the seventh inning. All right, game's over. W is flying. We're hearing Sweet Home Chicago. Let's do a let's do a wrap up here, class, shall we? It was such a great day for a ball game, as they would say. Great blue skies came out, and it's just such a great place to be at the cathedral for Major League Baseball. Heaven's address is 1060 West Addison. Thank you for joining me in this vlog that I finally did upon a request from Major League Hats. Go Cubs go, fly the W, and we'll see you in the World Series. Have a great day, class. Bye.